everyone to October 27th, 2020 um, to the school board workshop. I was writing something today. It's a month since March and the pandemic. It's been a long time trying to work things out, not seeing all your faces in person. So hard to believe how time is flying by. Anyway, thank you for being here. Um, today we're gonna, tonight we're gonna be talking about the strategic plan and in our uh, workshop, in our, I'm sorry, school board retreat, we had talked about uh, focusing our workshops around um, our strategic plan. Um, and just to reiterate and remind people of what um, our, I won't read all of them, but the strategic plan goals, which are five year goals, are the health and well being, global competency, multiple pathways and definitions of success, safe, sustainable, and effective facilities, environmental policies. And during that retreat, we also created our school board goals, the first one of which is to support these strategic goals and then to complete the building committee process and make a decision on how to provide safe and effective schools. So that work is currently being done. We've had one uh, building committee thus far. We have another one planned, um, hoping that the building committee will make a recommendation to uh, the school board by the end of 2020 so that we can consider it when we head into the um, budget process and then the, to support the work of the diversity equity and inclusion task force um, and that work has also begun there's been two meetings um, on that which has um, been quite they've been great they've been really interesting um, and they're constantly um, shifting a little bit and evolving uh, to try to figure out what we need and want out of that um, task force um, so coming back to this system nine months later, we're still trying to tweak and figure things out. But as a reminder, um, if people in the community are here, um, if you can avoid using the chat feature, it's just far too much for us to manage the, the meeting as well as on, on chat. Um, and I'd like to, as typical um, with meetings, just give the opportunity for anybody in the public to, to comment at the beginning here. So if you would like to, you could raise your hand um, and we can give you some time to speak if there's interest in that. Okay, seeing none. Oh, I see Audra Gore. You would like to speak? Hi, um, I I do want to speak, but I'm not hundred percent clear on what the agenda for the meeting is, like what it means. So, I do have a few things I want to share, but maybe I know it's not question and answer, but I'd like to just know more of what is happening this evening. What it will look like. And of course, you know, as much community involvement as is possible as you're thinking about what the new structure or what it looks like that you're planning right now um, would be wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure how familiar you are, you are Audra, but uh, once a month we have school board workshops um, starting in January, usually they're based um, for quite a while on um, the budget, gaining information um, and, and talking through things. It's less formal. We don't vote in this time period. Um, it's just a little bit less formal and opportunity to hear more about specific uh, things that are happening in the district. Tonight, I believe the principals, correct me if I'm wrong, Donna, but the principals are prepared to speak or no 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 oh. okay <laughs> no the board was going to going to talk tonight about um structuring the um the workshop meetings for addressing the school goals so it, it's sort of like a open conversation it's actually a, a quite simple meeting tonight 
um, to, to sort of plan out how we want to move forward with our um, workshop. So I suppose this would be an opportunity for the public to voice their opinion um, if there is a way that they would like to see some of these workshops happen. I think we were going to talk about as we go through the um, the different um, the, the goals for the street strategic plan, what the board would like to hear mm -hmm. um, about um, what they would like to hear about those plans, um, mm -hmm. our, our progress toward those goals. So okay. I, I believe the intent of tonight's meeting was to, to come up with a structure, Elizabeth's shaking her head yes, to come up with a structure um, of how those meetings would look and what kind of information you'd want. And mm -hmm. then the principals can speak to that yeah. the next meeting. <laughs> They're probably having a heart attack right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, principals. <laughs> All right. Um, well, does somebody want to get started with how they envision this and the structure on the board? Uh, Elizabeth, sorry. So I'm not going to talk about, you know, what I necessarily hope to hear. I think we can, you know, work on that together. But structurally, I think it would be great if we could nail down, um, you know, a way like maybe we're going to we're going to look at um, because we just have November and December really before we go into budget. So kind of maybe taking a first pass at, you know, the work or the conversations that have happened up until now, because I think a lot of things had to be kind of put on hold in March. Um, so we could sort of structure, you know, how, you know, where have we, what kind of conversations have the administrators had? What kind of work have the schools done around each of those? Um, and we could, we could break it up into, you know, the first, you know, couple of goals and then the second, whatever. For November and December or something like that because I mean I'm just guessing but I just don't think that um, March through June was <laughs> probably a great time to focus on strategic plan goals so mm -hmm. it would be nice to just kind of hear what they were able to do and then maybe touch base again you know in April and May and say okay let's let's have a closer to the end of the school year look you know what kind of progress had, has been made and in and, and whatever format we choose, I'd like it to be um, similar. So like if we ask them to address, you know, what they've done within the school and how they've communicated with parents and community or whatever, I hope that we would apply those same standards and so that everybody knows what's going on and everybody knows what's expected, you know, over the next couple of workshops as well as in the spring so that there aren't any surprises or or, you know, misunderstood expectations. Thank you, Elizabeth. Anything else from other board members or? This is Kimberly and um, yeah, I think, I guess, um, you know, my hope for this discussion was just to kind of put the uh, district goals back, um, back on all of our agendas. I, you know, not that people haven't been thinking about it, but there clearly have been um, bigger, <laughs> bigger things with the pandemic in front of us um, that have taken priority. So, um, yeah, I would just love to kind of get the strategic goals back front and center. And, um, uh, you know, I think um, as Elizabeth said, just kind of maybe dedicating a meeting or two to each goal. And, you know, it may be that, um, that further conversations um, and further ideas for workshops will come out of those individual meetings too. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. Um, I think, uh, Donna, we had discussed, um, Elizabeth was there as well in the conversation that in November, our next workshop, dedicating it to the building committee. Um, right. and so, I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 no. I no remembered apologies. after I spoke. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. And so we have um, we have uh, five district goals, and if we're covering that one and reviewing that one in November, that will be a nice way to um, to make sure that is happening. Um, which leaves um, a dis um, let's see, safe. So that's the safe, sustainable, and effective facilities, um, health, and well being. I think, um, I don't know, I, I'd like to have a conversation with the board around that in the sense of, do you feel like that has been discussed enough around COVID? Is there more conversation that we wanna have? Do we wanna have a special workshop around health and well-being? I have mixed feelings about that. I think that there's been a lot of conversation about health, but. Um, I'm not sure about the mental health side of things. I think there's been a lot of conversation about protocol and sanitizing and um, procedures and all of that stuff. So I'm not sure if the board would like to have another meeting um, focusing around that and with sort of the, the more global viewpoint of that strategic goal. Kimberly's got a thumb up. Thank Elizabeth. God. Well, is Kimberly got a thumb up or is she going to speak? <laughs> Was it meant to be a hand up? Yeah, I couldn't couldn't find the whole hand. Okay. <laughs> you go, Kimberly. I'll wait. <laughs> um, I, I was just going to say that um, that um, that yes, I agree. We have spent a lot of time um, talking about health and well being. Um, with uh, regards to the pandemic, but I would love to um, broaden the conversation and, and maybe try to um, incorporate some of, of what the community envisioned um, when, when that goal was chosen um, for the strategic goals for the district. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so maybe if we, so yes, I would like to have another meeting and, and maybe broaden it beyond the pandemic. So I just want to kind of follow up on what I was saying earlier. Would the board be interested in taking December and having the administrators talk about sort of all of the goals, maybe not talking about the building related goal because we will have the November and maybe make December really the, the look back over, you know, what, what conversations and action have happened to that point. And then starting hopefully in April, fingers crossed everybody <laughs> that we're done with budget by then, we can either break up, you know, we can have, a, you know, one goal per meeting or a couple of goals or all of them. I think that's kind of, that's, I'm just throwing that out there as an option and an idea. So to clarify, Elizabeth, you're, con you're suggesting December be the other four goals tapping into. Yeah, just the other four kind of uh, retrospective up to now and then you know kind of talking about what maybe what their hopes are for the school year because okay and then you know we can get a better picture we'll have workshops april may possibly june to get okay now how did people do with these goals donna yeah i can't raise my hands on the thing um, that's all right so uh, just to bring everybody up to speed for what we're doing right now. Um, last year before we, uh, pre-COVID, um, the, the administrators got together and, and um, wrote some outcomes for each of the strategic plan goals. And the plan is that um, within, in the next couple of weeks, they go back to um, their staff and share the outcomes with them and get feedback. And then they were going to bring that feedback to our administrative team meeting on November 10th. That, uh, so that we, we could talk about any feedback that we were getting from staff um, and any rewriting of the outcomes that we might need to do or adding or, or taking away. So 
uh, we could share those, um, the work that's been done on those at that um, meeting. So Elizabeth suggestion seems completely doable based on what you have planned with your meetings thus far. Okay, thank you for that, Donna. Um, Nasser, go ahead. Hi, good evening. So since this is an open forum, and I think uh, Heather, you beautifully articulated, we are really waiting for the public to make their opinions as well. As we all know, we all are guilty of uh, not following through. We every year make a goal. I make goals in my house. We make new year resolutions. And the first month or so, we may follow it, then we feel good about it. Uh, earlier in another meeting, in another place, I think Kim had mentioned it, that we seem to forget about our goals. Um, we need some sort of reminders in our workshops in our uh, uh, monthly meetings. And I think Elizabeth had pointed out and she was going towards the fact, okay, we have identified the goals. Now, what can the school or the administration or the principals do or that already exists that will achieve those goals? And so we at least need to make meetings or make purposely time for these goals at least four times a year, if possible. I do agree with uh, Heather that the health and wellness uh, due to COVID and due to mental health issues and all that does exist. Uh, so does bullying, uh, whether it's bullying racial or religion or, or simply weight or for other matters. And that is going to happen all year round. And, uh, COVID is not going away and neither is bullying going away. And so that goal should be always in assemblies and so in, in other places, letters to parents and so forth, or articles in Cape Korea should be always articulated and should be always reminded. So uh, I'd love to hear from the public at the end to see what we can do and how do we do things at home when we set goals, how do we achieve those goals? Do we put them on the refrigerator? Do we send a Snapchat to everybody in the family? How do we do that at home so we can do that for our kids in school as well? Um, thank you, Nasser. Can I ask a clarifying question just to understand one of your comments um, was around uh, the courier. Can, can you re-explain what you were referring to there? So I know that uh, when Donna came first, she did a great, great job, and we didn't have a newsletter, but she wrote in there for quite a few times. I and still so do now, sir. <laughs> okay, maybe I haven't read it. Every month. <laughs> so, it every month. So, so it needs to be, uh, it needs to be uh, a reminder of those goals, a reminder of doing some particular topic in reference to those goals should be articulated in, in this particular situation, the health and wellness, mental health issues and bullying, that you can never have enough of that reminder, that's all. Thank you, yeah. Donna. Yeah. Thank you for that clarification, Nasser. I also think, I, if I'm remembering correctly, the last newsletter that I wrote for the Courier had mentioned our strategic goals as a review based on um, our board meeting. It, it was all around our board retreat, excuse me. So. Um, yeah, but that is, it's, it's a great way to communicate and to share with the public. So you are absolutely right. We want to keep that up. Um, I see, Cindy, you've had your hand up for a while. Um, at the moment, we are having discussion among the board, um, but I will um, happily open to public comment after the board has had a chance to discuss it. That's okay. okay. Um, I do see that you've raised your hand um, and I'll come back to you. All right, thanks. thanks. Uh, are there any other comments from board members based on this idea of what Elizabeth and Donna have referred to for December. Yeah. Okay. I'm not seeing uh, comments. So um, 
Is there anything else that the board feels should be included? Um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is that one of our one of our goals as a board is to support the strategic plan goals. And if Donna is prepared in December to after meeting with administrators and to, to report back on those four um, strategic plan goals, that still leaves two of our board goals unattended. Actually, it doesn't because one of them is the building committee, but it leaves the DEI task force not included in a board workshop to talk about. Um, I'm not, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot, Kathy, um, but um, I'm wondering if maybe we can figure that out. I, I, I would love to sort of weave the DEI task force somehow into a workshop and have a bigger conversation. Um, so far, there's been two meetings. There's been a lot of work behind the scenes happening. I don't know if, Kathy, am I putting you too much on the spot to maybe speak of those two meetings a little bit? Um, it doesn't have to be super formal, but. Uh, no, no, I think that's fine. Um, so, uh, sorry, I'm, my head was in, well, so when would be a good time to have a, a workshop on the topic, but yes. And so, that, can um, I interrupt for one second? That's yeah. my, my point being is that um, we had had a few conversations about the work. We want it to be meaningful. We want it to be lasting. We want it to have grip and stay. And in order for that to happen, it may go slower than we want it to, we said, because teachers are spent and they have only so much time as opposed to in regular years when they might've had more time. So my point being is maybe a workshop doesn't happen until that April or May so that there is the time to discuss it. Or as a board, do we wanna have this conversation sooner? So anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt, but that that's where I was thinking and that's where I wanted you to sort of go forward with. Right. Okay. Yes. And and I think and I think that is the question. And honestly, we'll just defer to the will of the board because I um uh, certainly the people who have attended the meetings and, and membership again at this point is very fluid. Um, um I mean, we we see this as a as a multi year initiative, arguably something that's actually never done, right? Yes. I mean, we're always going to care about diversity and equity and inclusion, um, and um, <clears throat> having said that, well, and connected to that is the idea that um, that we really do see ourselves at the very beginning stages. I mean, the bulk of the first meeting was spent with folks. Who were there just talking about their interest in this and why they wanted to be at a, at a time when people are already feeling very very stretched why why was it important to them to to be part of this this initiative um and we 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 anticipate working with outside organizations both in terms of providing professional development um in conducting policy and practice and curricular audits and so, and all of that takes a, uh, a while to set up. And so even though we're meeting on a biweekly basis currently, I'm not sure that we'll continue at that pace, but um, you know, I think it's gonna be a good couple of months before we have, um, you know, be maybe before we'll be ready to workshop. And the advantage of spring presentations that we could then sort of get ready for the next year. On the other hand, if you want the opportunity to chew on these issues, beyond the regular updates that I'm gonna be providing, that Heather's gonna be providing, that Donna will be providing, then um, meeting you know, midway through the year is also a possibility. So I don't know if you want, if, if that- how Yeah, if I'm want, wondering, to um, more? there's an event happening on Tuesday the 3rd, a professional development event, a DEI, yeah. is that correct? Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you could just speak and share quickly to the public and the board right now what that is? Sure. Um, so, um, so there's a woman named Leah Howe, who is um, a, a professor at Leslie University, and she is an expert in trauma-sensitive schools. And she provided professional development during our first two in-service weeks. Um, she conducted a two-hour session in each of the three schools on understanding and addressing pandemic-related trauma. And um, that was very well received 
that that presentation. And afterwards, she uh, mentioned to me that she had partnered with a woman who is a professor at Case Western Reserve University and who's done a lot of work around race and that they are that they have a presentation that looks at COVID-19 race and trauma. Um, so it would build on the work of that initial presentation, but and 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 add in the 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 the, the issue of race. So there's a, a really nice nexus there between you know. And we're obviously paying a lot of attention to social emotional learning. I mean, all of our students and our staff have been impacted by the by the moment in which we find ourselves, the pandemic related moment in which we find ourselves, but also the the calls for racial and social justice, that that moment too. So so they are gonna be co-presenting to the entire district for two hours on Tuesday. And then after that, we have members of the task force from each of the schools conducting a 45 minute debrief. Um, so. So just to clarify, the entire district is receiving that presentation? Correct. The and then district. there's a smaller debrief and conversations Correct. happening as Correct. part and of I the would, PD uh, day. And all, now that I say that, not, it, yes, our, pardon me? All virtually. Yes, all virtually. All virtually. And, and also, um, it is not a paid work day for our ed tech, so they will not be there, but, but um, okay. anyone on a teacher contract will be there. Okay. Um, I had a follow-up question to that, but Phil has his hand raised, so I'm going to let you go ahead, Phil. Oh, thanks. I think uh, Kathy answered most of my questions, but I was just going to, I was just going to make a suggestion that we hear a uh, sort of more detailed presentation later in the spring. Um, to give the, the group some time. I think we sort of talked about that at our <clears throat> at our retreat, but but from time to time, it would be helpful maybe when you work into your monthly presentations to the board, even a short paragraph uh, or a couple sentences of uh, just what we're doing. I think it's helpful for us, but also for members of the community to even know that the work continues. I think that reminder is even helpful to people. So mm -hmm. that's that would be my, my input on that. Um, otherwise, I've been fully in, uh, supportive of everyone else's thoughts on how this pr should proceed throughout the year in terms of the workshops. I really like the idea of one uh, deep dive into each goal um, per meeting. Um, however, that's done, you know, updates from the, from, from the principals and the, and the administration discussions around those, um, but have, have that topic really get the light of day, including the mental health, the health, because um, what I was reminded of, you know, we came up with that goal before we knew that COVID existed, right? So that wasn't about COVID. That was there was something else, and um, so I think it's important to continue to to highlight the health and health and wellness of uh, our buildings and our and our uh, our people. Mm -hmm. um, so, two things that I'd like to say. One is in regards to what Phil was saying in the health and well-being, and um, you know, this is um, no slam on the district. This is no criticism by any means, but um, I think the mental health and well-being that we were focused on pre-COVID, as you mentioned, which was, you know, one of our concerns was high stress, right? That these students tend to push themselves in this district and, and that stress is a huge piece of what a lot of these students um, hold. And I think, um, just watching my own children in high school and their experience. And again, this isn't criticism, but the, the mini terms are imbalanced. And so there's actually a lot of stress for a little period and then really lack of charge and momentum and um, drive um, and, and boredom there. So just maybe just acknowledging that and having some conversation around that. It's that can be in itself uh, quite difficult to manage that flip-flopping all the time. Um, I think in a similar way that um, consistent high levels of stress can be challenging. So just having those conversations around how it affects us when we get to the well-being um, is important. So I think um, back to you, Kathy, I'm wondering if um, we had mentioned in the first meeting about the DEI, how it was the conversation, like you said, about 
these teachers showing their passion and that they a lot of them is are already expressed interest in that in a busy time they were still willing to make the space to have these conversations and be a part of this um i i'm wondering if you can speak again i don't mean to put you two on the spot but i, I i'm confident in your ability to to, to speak about um, the conversation that we had in the second meeting, the last meeting, about the focus of anti-racism um, and that conference that you went to and that you gave a quote from a gentleman that explains the anti-racism approach to this. Do you know what I'm referring to? And I'm wondering, are you comfortable speaking for a moment to that so that the I board is aware? Do. Sure, and I can also um, pull that that quote up um, and and share it. But that could be um, great. Yeah. Okay. So why don't I why don't I do that and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm gonna make you a co-host if I can. I'll try. Um, I can't make her a co-host, and I think only you can. I have done it. Great. Actually, you don't, you don't, oh, I was going to say you don't have to, I can just, I can just read it to you. I just have to find it. Okay. Well, if it's too hard, if it's easy and quick, that's great. And if it's too hard, I understand that as well. And I appreciate you. And, and I just want to let NASA know that I wrote about this in my article that will be coming out very soon. And Kathy helped me fill in some of the details. So. Oh, that's okay. great. Donna. On my Kate Courier article. So. Nasser, be sure to read it. <laughs> so, um, you know, essentially, um, yeah, we we talked about the fact that we we have to start somewhere, and that just just to, I mean, diversity, equity, inclusion. I mean, these are huge, huge issues, huge topics, and. Um, you know, it was clear from the initial meeting that um, that 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 many members, um, many many of the participants, um, had been motivated by the, by well, beginning with the um, I mean, not that they hadn't been interested in anti-racism efforts before, but that they were they had been they were really motivated by um, by uh, by George Floyd's murder and um, and the the protests that had resulted from that. Um, so, so there was that. And then two, um, as Heather mentioned, um, there are several of us who are participating in a cultural competence institute that is uh, being sponsored by the Maine, uh, Maine School Superintendents Association and Maine School Boards Association, so MSSA and MSBA. There were well over 300 participants, so 300 educators from around the state participating in this, um, in this series, in, a, in this workshop series. So there are eight sessions. Um, the facilitators, a man named Lawrence Alexander, he works for the DEI practice for Carney Sando and Associates. Um, so he, um, he had a slide um, and I, I just quickly Shot it down as he was talking, and 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 this is what he said, because um, he said you're going to be asked, um, you're going to be asked why why start with racism, why that particular ism, or that particular group, and he said race is the base for responsible conversations about difference, especially in a white community. Life will lead to a global village. It is particularly important if you don't have any people of color to have conversations about race. And then he went on to say, this is not a service that you're doing for people of color, um, that this is, this, is, um, this is something that you need to do for your students um, as, they, as they move out into the, into the uh, larger world. Um, and they also pointed out that it's not a zero sum game and that the, um, uh, that all of the work that we do around race will be applicable to other minority subgroups. Um, so that was, uh, and, and then he just, he just, he just emphasized the importance of, of doing this, of, of predominantly white communities engaging in this work. So it was persuasive um, to me and the other attendees um, and which we, and we shared that with the, the 
other members of the, the other participants on the task force. And, and so we decided to adopt that as our initial focus. So I think, um, please correct me, Kathy, if I'm wrong here, but what I heard in that meeting later said was that this would be the starting point um, that everybody recognized that it would lead to all the other isms, but that um, the racism has been so systemic um, with so many tentacles for so long, um, so massive that um, that is the place um, to begin. Um, and, you know, it's not to say that the other, um, that the other isms aren't important. It's like, when you say black lives matter, it's not saying that all other lives don't matter. Um, it's just going to this very deep systemic um, problem that has been here forever, um, that, that has, has never been shifted or addressed in the way it really deeply, deeply needs to be. Um, does that sound accurate to the conversations we had, Kathy? Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see if other board members have a comment about that. Um, and I just wanted to fill people in with that. Um, which leads me to um, hearing what Phil had to say about, um, you know, I, I, I think the DEI, the anti-racism, the inclusion work is um, one of our huge tasks this year that will arguably be on our goals for the foreseeable future. We're not gonna check this off, off the list this year. And that and the building committee and the budget are gonna be the, the meat of our work this year. And so if we have um, a nice follow-up, a deeper follow-up um, in April or May or June, and then um, get these regular uh, updates in the regular business meeting, I think that could be really um, beneficial. I um, am feeling uh, very strongly that as a board, um, I would like us to come up with some sort of a statement uh, about how we feel towards, um, towards this topic. Many people have. The town has said something. Um, other businesses, districts all over the place have been saying this. Um, I think, was it Scarborough, Kathy, today? Was it Scarborough or South Portland? I think it was Scarborough, right? Um, had something happening around anti-racism, um, a miscommunication and um, concern. And so I think for us to come out with a clear statement about how we feel and want to approach this would be great. Um, I, I'm wondering how the board feels about all that. We do have time, I think, tonight to have this discussion and possibly craft something. Um, I saw Kimberly first and then Nasser. So go ahead, Kimberly. Um, sure, thank you. I, um, I had raised my hand before, um, before you spoke. So um, that's fine. Uh, so I guess I, um, I, I was speaking more to the piece about timing for the DEI presentation. And I agree um, with Phil's uh, recommendation for doing that in April or in the, in the spring time period. I think we'll have the uh, monthly uh, committee check-ins, um, which will keep this in all of our thoughts and um, moving ahead as an action item. Um, so I'm not so concerned about it um, not getting the attention it deserves. And I think that having the meeting later in um, the spring will give the committee plenty of time to, or not plenty of time, as we've said, it's, it's a huge topic, but we'll give them time to, to get started and, and, uh, and be able to really have a worthwhile conversation. 
as far, Nasser. Oh. I was just gonna say, as far as the statement goes, I fully support, I think, I think coming out with a statement um, as a board is um, really important. And I guess I, I just would defer, I, I don't know that people came tonight thinking that this was a conversation that we'd be having. Um, so I, you know, I, I don't know if people feel in the mental space to engage in that conversation right now, so. That's fair. We can okay. have that and decide how people feel. We can yeah, do it I'm another okay. time as well, perhaps. Yeah. Nasser. Hi. Um, yeah, we all agree that it's a huge topic. And we also all agree to make it as general as possible so we can be inclusive of all the minorities. Uh, and I just, for one, I think you guys heard me here. I'm a Muslim, I'm an Afghan, I'm brown, I'm Muslim, and I'm also a male. So I could be associated with many isms. However, we do have to remember why this came to our forefront or why it came to, why it surfaced to the table. And that's because of the Black Lives Matter or that's because of the Black people or that's because of the minority students we have as a school. So as big a statement we want to make, we want to make a bold statement at the same time that we are here for you at this particular time to all the Black students who are in Cape Elizabeth and who have been vulnerable. Plus, such community and such community and such community. So I do not, and we do want to admit some of the facts, and I think we are doing, whether systematic racism exists or not exists. That's a debate for the nation and other people in the state and so forth to uh, debate it. But I personally, before leaving the board, which a couple more months left, a few more meetings, I personally would like to see, uh, this is personal again, my kids become be comfortable. I want my kids to be comfortable in Cape Elizabeth. I don't want to have to pack my bags and make a decision one day that hell with education and academics, my kids are comfortable in Portland schools. So how do we do that? How do we reach out to those students? And when do we do that? because there are times where, as Heather has said earlier, health becomes important than academics. If my kids are constantly having mental health issues, hell with academics. I'm gonna go pack my bags and go to Portland. So what guarantee or what can we do as a community and as a board members to make sure that I do not come to that decision and I'm close to that decision. And it's not a threat, it's a reality. I prefer to have healthy student, or healthy child than they have a good academic in Cape Elizabeth. That's my two cents. Nasser, thank you for that. And I think, um, I think you are in a unique position that can add a perspective that none of us can add. Um, and I value that perspective and opinion. Um, I did, I, I think there's one thing that I can say is that I don't think there's any guarantees. I heard you ask for a guarantee at the end and we can try um, and, and we can keep working on this. Um, and doing the best we can and hearing the stories um, back this spring um, and hearing some of your family members um, share their stories um, is, is powerful. And I hope some of that continues. And I hope that we can move the needle towards more inclusivity. Um, that is the goal, but to guarantee, um, I, I, I think is not a realistic point of view. Um, Again, I, I think your perspective in all of this is invaluable. I mean, it, 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 it provides um, an amazing opportunity for us all to learn um, and see the challenges that, um, that 
students can face. So thank you. Any other comments, board members who haven't chimed in yet? I want to acknowledge that um, you know this is sort of morphed into um, a, maybe a little bit of a different conversation than any of us really expected the evening to happen. So um, you know, if if it feels like too much right now, please speak to that. Um, if you believe in this idea of making a statement as a board, please speak to that. Um, this is just open informal conversation to try to have publicly and open. I remember back in the spring when I was trying to do a newsletter, it was happening a little bit through emails and it got to be, wait a second, this isn't enough. This is this has to be happening in public. So this is a chance for us to have those conversations. Um, Elizabeth, go ahead. Thanks. So I agree and would love for the board to come out with some sort of brief statement. Um, I am a firm believer that um, a car built by a committee won't run. <laughs> and so I, I don't support us trying to write a statement together here tonight. Um, it could be that we create a, a Google Doc or something where people share thoughts or ideas, but um, in the end it's, or even if there's someone who says, I think I have a, a good idea and I'm gonna take a stab at a couple of sentences and then share it out. Um, but <laughs> it, writing a statement by committee can be really <laughs> ineffective and um, difficult, <laughs> really difficult. It's possible that maybe we can have conversation around you know, what we want this statement to say and you know, what we, what we hope for and then you know the writer takes a stab at it or you know some people work on it and share it my two cents elizabeth i appreciate that i like the idea of um at least having ideas shared and have the conversation of the kind of statement that we want to write because um you know if it's a statement it's representing all of our opinions and so it, it we need to have that discussion right it can't just come from me it can't just come from the writer it has to be there um i i do think discussion needs to happen before google doc and i'm thinking of you know the open minds i think it was a year or so ago we had we did wordsmith in a work in a workshop the um open doors open minds um some of the sayings that we use around the school um, and we did actually play with words, but there was something there to start with. Um, so I can I can honor that, and I think um, I think it's a great idea to, as a board, <clears throat> talk about the kind of um, statement we want to write. Um, and I'm wondering um, if other board members are feeling confident or comfortable with that approach, and then providing a Google document to wordsmith it and tweak it out a little bit. Others? Um, this is Kimberly, and, and I'm just I'm just noting that we don't have uh, Lara with us tonight. I I would yep. just fully support that that we don't you know have anything final <laughs> without her involvement. Mm -hmm. I would definitely uh, pull her into the loop um, tomorrow or the next day and let her know. Absolutely, Kimberly. Thank you. Right. Anybody else? Um, I guess I'm looking at a few blank faces. I guess I'm just wondering if there's a nod, would people like to follow through on the board and have the conversation around the type of statement we'd like to make? Or is this not seem like something as a board you feel like we want to or should be doing? Um, Again, this has to be a group decision. So I think Elizabeth said that you are open to having a conversation tonight about possible comment or possible ideas in the statement. Is that correct? Did I read you correctly, Elizabeth? 
Yeah, I'm open to the discussion. I'm not super prepared since I didn't know we were going to be going in this direction. So I'm just, I'm being totally honest that I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not prepared. Okay, so then um, in honoring that, uh, because this did just sort of bubble to the surface, would the board like to plan another time to have this discussion with more time to prepare? Hope, I saw you sort of shaking your head yes. Phil, I'm seeing you shake your head yes. Um, so I'm just gonna go around and, and I, I'd like to hear from everybody on the board to see how they feel about, you know, right now. I am happy to, um, call this meeting, have it be an hour after opening it up to Cindy again. I told her I'd give her a chance to speak and having a short and sweet meeting tonight. I think we came up with our workshop goals, um, meeting plans and, and find another time um, or follow through right now. But um, I'd like to hear your opinions. Um, Elizabeth, can I start with you? It sounded like you're thinking you'd like to find another time with more opportunity to prepare. I would. I. I... I think this is really important. I'd love to just yeah. think about it a little more and yeah. add it to um, another agenda. Okay. I can completely understand and honor that. Um, hope you're right next to her. So can I call on you? Sure. Um, I, I agree. And I apologize for my blank face. Um, this reminds you of being in a in a college course where I didn't do the reading the night before. That's what I feel like right now. <laughs> oh God, I don't um, want that. So I, I and it did sort of bubble up, and it's an I do, I feel unqualified to say anything right now. So I do sort of honestly, I'm filled with dread right now because okay. <laughs> that's yeah. how I feel when I'm not prepared. And I, I agree, you know, maybe it deserves another um, time slot when we have time to prepare and we know what's on the agenda. Awesome. I appreciate your honesty. Um, yeah, Phil, you're the next one that I see. Yeah, no, I just reiterate that, um, okay. you know, I'd like to see, and I don't know how the timing would work, but I'd like to see, you know, a meeting where we just, it's a follow-up to what we did in the spring. You know, we had talked about that and, and then that would be the meeting where we could, we would talk about this in more detail. Um, but it feels yeah. a little bit, I, and I, I want to make sure because perception is that, it's not that I don't want to put a statement. In fact, I do. And I think I've been wanting to for some time now. And I think mm -hmm. we're behind the eight ball, quite frankly, with a lot of other districts um, uh, uh, who, who have put out statements. So I just want to make that clear. Um, but but I do, I do, uh, I like to be prepared about what I want to think about and say, and I, and I wasn't prepared for this discussion tonight. So yeah, I'd like to put on an agenda sometime yeah. soon. Okay. Um, can I ask you a follow-up question to that? Thank you yeah. again for your honesty. When you said a follow-up to the spring, um, I'm curious what you are looking for with that. Is that more public comment? Is that more um, reviewing what was um, said? What, what specifically are you um, curious about as a follow-up? Well, I mean, I think, I mean, it's a good question. I think the one thing that we, know, we want to do now is put out a statement. Right. I mean, that, so that's, mm -hmm. that's a concrete thing. We've also set, we've also encouraged and set up the DEI work, uh, task force. Right. And, but we're going to let that, I think we should let that work happen. So mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't think it's a workshop to kind of dive into that work because again, I think we need to let that happen. We'll, we'll talk about that in the spring. It's, I think it, it can be as simple as, all right, we heard, I mean, I think ideally we would have had one soon after. Right. And so it's, it's sort of a follow-up meeting. Like we heard, there's more to hear, but we heard a lot of people and then we didn't have a chance to, to do anything with that. And, and what, I, what I'm thinking is I'd like to, my, one thing we do is in our roles is we can say something and we can set policy. And, and so that's, I guess, what I'd like the conversation to be sort of a focused conversation about we're hearing this, we heard it in our meeting, we're hearing it in other places and, and what is our response? So that we can kind of be focused, um, focused uh, in our task at that meeting, That's and I'll be really prepared. Nice frame, to, Bill. I just I'll, want to I'll be thank prepared you for to that. show up. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. I didn't hear you. I heard it was a nice compliment, but can you? No, I just want to say I think that's a really nice frame for how we can yeah. um, be like think about our work. It's I like that. Thank you, Phil. Yeah. So it sounds like the bulk of it is. Um, 
creating a statement, but as a response to what we heard back in the spring. Yeah, as a framework for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, Nasser, would you like to speak? Yeah. I'm here. There you are. Would you like to uh, speak up to this idea of creating another time um, to create a statement based on the information we heard in the spring as a follow-up? Yeah, I agree with everybody. As, as, okay. as we, we all know, we're not prepared to come up with a statement and uh, we want to make the best statement. I don't know, know if necessary for the board to make a statement here or are we going to give some public opinion now or later or what? Mm -hmm. Well, I think um, I think we've heard some public statement. I think um, response to the board, or in my opinion, I think response to that meeting is for us to state how we feel and then perhaps have another invitational listening session. Um, I, I thought that um, forum or meeting or conversation was fabulous and I would very much like to do it again um, at a, on a yearly basis, on a twice a year basis. Um, so I would like to do both. I think that the statement work um, will take some time. And I think I would not, my, my opinion is that I don't think I'd wanna do both in one meeting. Um, I, I think they're both substantial and they both warrant um, attention. Um, and time. So that's where I'm leading with that. I agree. Okay. Um, Kimberly, you're the last board member to speak to this, which is kind of nice. It's always easier to be the last because sometimes people have said everything and you can just be like, sounds good, but feel free to say whatever you want. <laughs> that didn't come out right. I wasn't trying to say what you wanted to say. I was just saying, I always love being last. Go ahead. Um, no, I appreciate, um, at Phil's point that I personally um, am not interested in putting this off because I don't think it's extremely important. I am. Um, it's because I think it's so important that I want to make sure that um, that I've had some time to prepare and have my um, my thoughts a little more organized. And um, and I also think um, that it's important that we have all the board members. Um, available to partake in the discussion if, if possible, or, or at least that they know that the discussion is going to take place and can make plans to be there if um, so, so is their will. So um, I support reconvening in, in the near future to, to make, a, make a statement. Okay. So that sounds pretty, um pretty solid for everyone there. I, I think um, it'd be worthy to have the conversation roughly about when we don't have to actually nail down a date. Um, I guess there's two questions I'd like to pose to the board. One is, are we okay adding an extra meeting? I don't think this should, we don't have another workshop scheduled. If we're um, November talking about facilities that will take the whole time. If December we're doing the, the, um, the strategic plan and then we get straight into uh, budget. Um, so are we comfortable setting up another meeting specifically for this task? Um, and then two, if we do, um, we do have an election coming up. December, we have new board members coming in. Um, do we wanna wait to then? Or is this something that we feel like we've waited long enough and we want to create a statement based on what the, the current board um, believes because we do have valuable members here as well. So um, just speaking with that, I mean, there's no right answer to that. There will be valuable board members coming on afterwards um, for the next um, term. Um, my inclination, I'm happy to start, is that I would like to see this work done sooner rather than later. Um, I know there are board members coming in, but I would like to not wait until December. Um, and I would be happy to choose a Tuesday night um, and add another meeting specifically for this. 
um, when there's time to plan. So that's my proposal and suggestion. Um, I'm not gonna call on you this time. I'm gonna let you just speak up when you feel like you have a, and if you have a comment to that. This is Kimberly and um, and I, I too, um, think if we could get something on the calendar sooner, that would be my preference. I, I also feel like it, it might be, um, it, it's a big task and, um, and having new board members who don't know the other board members, um, it might be just a, a tough conversation for them to dive into it as their first task on, on the board. So. Uh, I'll chime in on the timing. I think sooner is better. Uh, I mean, because I think we're already behind. T enough time has passed. Uh, too much time has passed. So yeah, that's my okay. I also that. think sooner is good, and I know that the two board members who's going to come. I think there's three of them, if possible and allowable and legal and policy wise and all that. Let them have come, and they're probably here too today. Let them come and, and state their opinion. It's just not necessarily they cannot vote, but they can state their opinion as well. Just like all the public, everybody can start an opinion in email. Everybody can send uh, an example uh, of the goals as well, uh, or a statement if they think they can articulate something. By all means, send them in the email and we'll work around it. So no one should hide their opinion, especially when it's a good one. Thank you for that, Nasser. Thank you very much for that. Anyone else? Um, I too think we should do it sooner rather than later. Um, I'm not gonna qualify it by saying we've waited too late or whatever, because I think we're gonna do what we need to do when we can do it and we'll do it well. Um, so I'd like to do it while um, Nasser is still on the board with us and can contribute. I'm just going to say it. Not that his voice is more important than anybody else's, but I think this has been an important goal for him. So I'd like to have his voice with us. Um, and I, I don't think it's a bad idea to have the um, potential school board members join us. Although since there are three of them, only two of them will actually be joining us. So I agree, you know, have people speak, but in the end, it really has to be a statement from the board. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I just want to say my Tuesdays are filling up. <clears throat> so my only my only one uh, free Tuesday in November um, is next Tuesday election night. Uh, we have two school board member meetings and I have another evening meeting on the uh, 17th. Um, okay, uh, well, since I wasn't gonna talk uh, dates, but does that work with other board members? And then I can certainly reach out to Hope, just, uh, I don't know why I did it again, Laura, um, and we can use that as a starting place to recommend um, the third. It's the only Tuesday. night I have available as well as far as Tuesdays. Okay, and then after that, it's December 1st, which is the week before the next. Okay. The, the December school meeting, school meeting, so. Okay. I will um, send an email out and propose that, and we'll use that as a starting point to see see where that goes. And then if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll maybe find another day or another time or wait till December. We'll try to figure it out. Might be a healthy oh. diversion for us. I know. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Um, any other comments before the board? I want to give Cindy, she's been patient, a chance to speak. Um, just one second, Cindy. Yep. Um, all right. Um, before I open to Cindy, I just want to say thank you to the board for this discussion. Um, sometimes it takes time to plan things um, and be together to, to figure out those, those plans. So I know we didn't doesn't seem like we had groundbreaking work happening tonight, but I think it was important um, to talk this through and to figure out how we want to move forward. So thank you very much for this time. Um, Cindy, go ahead. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah. I 
I think it's great that you're doing the statement and I would agree that it's probably, you know, later than it should be, but I'm glad that the board's moving forward with it. Um, and if you haven't, not necessarily that it should be, our statement should be in response or influenced by the Scarborough issues, but there have been, I think three letters to this point issued by Scarborough um, schools. And if you haven't had a chance to read them, I would encourage it um, because they, yeah, they, I, feel like each one digs the hole a little deeper for them. Um, but anyway, that's another issue. I wanted to talk about what the um, kind of the original agenda for the meeting was, which was kind of structuring the workshops to support the school goals. And I like the strategic plan goals, um, but as goals, I don't find them measurable and I don't see, how do we know we've achieved those goals at the end? I mean, they're, they're a very nice vision for the school district but how will we know we've accomplished that? And, um, you know, Kathy, I like what you shared about the workshops you're doing for the diversity and inclusion, and that, that becomes a school board goal. That's not on the um, district goals, but, um, you know, I, and I haven't seen the detail, but have any of these, either the um, school district goals or the school board goals been broken out into actual actionable steps? and really saying what, you know, how will we know we have, um, you know, an engaged global citizen that's a student, you know, what, show me some evidence of that. And what can we do? Um, and this helps with our community conversation too, and, and how we're, how the school reports to the school board. So if there are specific steps identified for those goals, then we can say, you know, the, the teachers will attend um, five workshops throughout the year on these topics. And then what's the outcome of those workshops? The teachers learned this and how did that impact our students? Well, the teachers learned this and last week we identified two students who will benefit from this and we're able to refer them for something as a result of what we learned in that workshop. So I think it helps um, again, at a high level to have measurable activities associated with your goals. Um, when the school team is reporting on those goals to the board or to the community, they can then say, you know, we've already completed three of the five things we said we were going to do to meet this goal. And here's the outcome of that. Um, and also in the communication to the community, I mean, the, the Cape Courier is one tool that we all kind of leverage. I think it's worthwhile exploring other ways to communicate. And also um, just communicating in a more easy to digest graphic way. I mean, I think some people enjoy reading the narrative updates. Maybe we just want a picture, um, a picture that says, you know, some kind of infographic type report almost, or the executive summary with high level bullet points. Because as people are flipping through the career or scrolling online, um, they can see that and digest it visually quickly and not have to pause to read an article. And I think that helps get the word out and it helps it, it's more easy to share that way too. Um, so those might be ways going forward um, to engage the community more. Um, and I know with um, on the facilities work, that's, that's already a community issue. The whole community is engaged with that. You've got a building committee that's that's made up of community members. But what about for these other goals? Can the community be engaged in helping um, define the success of those goals? And really, I mean, schools are one part of, you know, getting our students engaged in becoming global citizens or, you know, but, but having the families themselves vested in those goals will be very helpful. And if there are ways to, with each, um, which, each, each of those efforts, as you define the activities for the goals, find ways to also incorporate um, some sort of community, community activity in them. I think it gives um, you know, the students and community ownership over the success of the outcomes. Thank you, Cindy. Um, any questions or responses? I 
All right. We will take those comments into consideration, Cindy. Look at this, we're gonna be done before eight o'clock, I think. I, um, I think this is it. I think we're good to go. I wanna thank you again for being here. Um, and I will reach out to the other board member, Laura, um, and speak to her about what we talked about tonight. Um, thank you all for your input and comments and I hope you have a great night. Enjoy. Bye everyone.